looking at consumer protection now. This is actually part of the operations management part of Unit 1, but my students looked at it as part of marketing. So you need to recognise that customers are protected by law and these laws are going to influence the business. Now I'm going to go through some specific laws that influence businesses. You don't have to be able to quote these laws, but having an awareness of them is really good for your business exams, obviously, but it's also really good for you as a consumer as well and to, to be able to know your rights when you're out shopping. So consumer protection, the key term that we're going to learn now is that consumer protection is laws that protect customers when buying goods or services. So I'm going to go through a few um, laws. So the Sales of Good Act, and this has been amended a number of times, um, but it has three main conditions. They must be, the goods and services must be as described by the business. Um, so if they're describing um, a kettle that can boil water within 50 seconds or whatever, that sounds reasonable to me, but um, it must be able to boil water within 50 seconds. It must be as it says on the box or the tip. Um, goods and services must also be fit for the purpose that they have been intended to um, do as well. So if it's, again, going back to the example of a kettle, it's got to be able to boil water, it's got to be able to contain the water, and it's got to be of a satisfactory quality. Now, different items would have different um, requirements in terms of quality. So if you've got something like disposable razors, you wouldn't be expecting those to last for a year. But if you've got something like, going back to the example of a kettle, you would be expecting that to last for, you know, two to three to five years. So different items have different um, quality standards, really, that would be applied when you're looking at what has got to be a satisfactory quality. Okay, the Consumer Protection Act states that consumers um, should be awarded compensation if they suffer injury or damage when they are, and this is really key here, correctly using the good. Okay, so you can't be incorrectly using it and expect for there to be um, compensation awarded. Although, if it is serious harm that it's caused, there may be grounds for compensation, but it's, it's under a different law. It's the Consumer Protection Act says you've got to be using it correctly. Um, so this was a recently a story about Mars recalling chocolate bars in 55 countries. And um, I'm sure they've done this not only because of the Consumer Protection Act, but because they, they do you know care about their customers and their reputation as well. But um, one of the reasons they may have done this is because they would have to pay compensation out to anybody who has been hurt by, um, I think they found little bits of plastic in some of these um, products from, I think it was maybe a part of a machine that had broken or something and some little bits of the machine had possibly got into the, the, the product. So that could, you know, plastic you're not meant to eat, that could damage um, people's health. And so they would have been liable under that Consumer Protection Act. The other one is the Competition Act. So businesses can't agree to fix prices at a high level with other similar businesses. So this is anti-competitive. It's good for businesses if they are able to do that because they are able to increase their profit margins um, but it's not good for consumers and they get an unfair deal um, so here's a recent news article um, car parts price fixing fines for Hitachi and Mitsubishi um, electric so they have been fined by the European Union for um, price fixing on those car alternators and starters um, so that's anti-competitive and it puts the price up of um, goods and services to an unnecessary level. And the distance selling app, this is really good if you're buying over the internet. Um, now, buying over the internet means that you cannot touch or try out that item. You're just making a decision to purchase it um, based on what it looks like on the computer screen, really. So therefore, they give you, uh, the law gives you a little bit more um, cooling off um, time to decide whether you really want it. Um, so the business must give seven day a seven day cooling off period if a customer changes their mind when they've purchased over the internet spe specifically. Even if there's nothing wrong with the product, they've got to give that seven day cooling off period. And unfair trading regulations. So 
quite similar in some ways to the, the sale of good act, but it's talking about advertisements must not mislead or deceive. So I always think that's really like similar to this goods and services must be as described. But I think this is a bit more, um, you know, the business is intentionally misleading um, and customers must be able to check price comparisons made in advertisements. So that's if a business says this is the lowest price in the UK, you've got to be able to um, check. Um, and that's why when we see those price promises by the supermarkets, they always have kind of fine print at the bottom of their adverts and um, they're always saying it's cheaper than and making comparison to another supermarket as well so that you can actually check that out. Um, so this is a, an example of a business, L'Oreal, who got in trouble for um, uh, for this I think it's foundation or something because these models were um, actually airbrushed the photos were airbrushed so it's misleading it the advert suggests that you can get these results with this product but <laughs> you can't obviously if the photos have been um, tampered with I suppose <laughs> So this is really important. What happens to a business if they don't follow the laws? So the business could get taken to court. Remember, being able to identify something is one mark, but being able to talk about the negative consequences or the positive consequences it could be for the business um, will get you those analysis marks. So fines, you know, that you can go even further. That, that increases their cost of production, reduces their profits. You might have a loss of customers uh, because of the bad um, reputation and you get a loss of revenue um, as well. Um, so again, affecting profit. And you may get a lot of bad publicity. Usually if it's a very big business, as we've just seen there, it's uh, an interesting news story. And this was on the BBC website so you know you get bad publicity so even people that aren't customers um, who maybe at one point would think about purchasing a product might be put off so you might have loss of sales and the business might ne even need to rebrand if it's been very damaging to their brand um, so it'll be interesting to see what VW do in the upcoming months obviously with their emission testing scandal that's gone on um, and rebranding is very expensive to do it could be millions of pounds worth of effort and um, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that so um, businesses obviously want to make sure that their customers are safe um, because well you could you could think about it in a in a selfish way and say that businesses want their customers to be safe and looked after because they want them to still purchase from them but I think a lot of businesses do you know do care about their, their customers as well and businesses are just made up of normal people who have you know um, caring um, objectives as well and caring ways about them but sometimes these laws can be quite difficult for um, businesses um, to follow because it can be quite expensive to meet the conditions. They might have to adapt to their products. They may even have to seek legal advice as well to make sure that they're fully, fully following the conditions of these laws. Any slight error by the business may lead to legal action and maybe heavy fines, even if they didn't intend to, to hurt anybody. It's just been a, an, a, an overlooked part of the product or the advertising campaign. And it can be quite time consuming as well to keep up with these new laws on consumer protection. So, so um, that's maybe why some businesses don't always welcome new regulation. Um, but you need to be able to recognise that consumers are protected by um, those laws. I think the Sales of Good Act is a really good one to, to, um, to know as well um, because that's like the fitness for the purpose of the product sold. It's actually quoted really in the specification objective.